In this video, I am going to show you how to use the Google Finance function in Google Sheets. What the Google Finance function is, is it is a powerful function that can be used to get real-time financial and market-related data. With this function, you can quickly import the current prices of various stocks, currencies, and other securities into your spreadsheet. And so learning to use this function properly can save you a lot of time importing financial market data. Now, before I get into the function, there is one uh, disclaimer that I want to make you aware of. So this data is not meant to be used by professionals. Professional use might require additional license, licensing fees from third party data providers. This data may also be delayed up to 20 minutes and sometimes quotes are not sourced from all markets. So this information that you pull with this function is meant to be used for informational purposes only and it's not meant to be used for trading or advice. So this function is for informational use and none of what I cover in this video is advice or should be used for trading. But if you want to gather market related information, this is a very, very powerful function. So now let's get into actually using the function. First, what we need to do is cover the syntax. And the syntax for this is pretty long because there is a lot of different information that you can pull. So this is the Google Finance syntax. So the first argument is ticker. And then there are optional arg arguments of attribute, start date, end date, or number of days, and interval. So what the ticker is, the first argument, this is the ticker symbol for the traded security that you want to import data for. And so if you want data from a specific exchange, you should put the exchange symbol before the ticker symbol. And you want this in quotation marks. So here's just a few examples and if you don't specify the exchange um, Google Sheets is just gonna choose one for you so after your ticker argument is the attribute that you want to import and so it's gonna be set to price by default if you do not supply this and there are a ton of different attributes that you can pull for the security that you're looking at so for real-time data, you can select price, which is the price of the security using real-time data, but there may be a delay up to 20 minutes. You can do price open, which is the price at market open. You can do high, which is the high price of the current day. You can do low, which is the low price of the current day. Volume, trading volume of the current day. Market cap, market capitalization of the stock. Trade time the time of the last trade, data delay, so this will tell you how delayed the real-time data is. Then you have volume average, the average daily trading volume, PE, which is the price earnings ratio, EPS, which is earnings per share, high 52, so that's the 52-week high price, low 52, 52-week low price, change, which is the change in price since the previous day's close, beta, which will import the beta value, change percentage which is percentage change since previous days close closed yes which is closing price on the previous day shares so the number of outstanding shares currency which is the currency the security is priced in and so that is for current data for historical data if you want to pull historical data you can only select these attributes in the function which is open close high, low, volume, and all. And then if the symbol you're using as uh, the ticker in the function is a mutual fund, then you have different attributes that you can select. Close yesterday, so that's the closing price on the previous day. Date, that's the date that the net asset value was reported. Return year to date, so that's the year to date return of the mutual fund. Net assets, which is the net assets change. So the change from the most recent net asset value and the previous one, change percentage. So percentage change in net asset value, yield percentage, the distribution yield, 
which is basically the sum of the previous 12 months income distributions and net asset value gains divided by the previous month's net asset value return day. So that's one day total return, one week total return, four week total return, 13 week total return, 156 week total return, 260 week total return, income dividend, so the most recent cash distribution amount and income dividend date, the most recent cash distribution date, capital gain, so the most recent capital gain distribution amount, morning star rating and expense ratio. So those are all of the different attributes that you can import with the function and it depends which ones are available whether you're importing current prices, historical, or whether the symbol that you're using is a mutual fund. You have different options for each one. And so the next optional argument is start date. So this is if you want to fetch historical data with the function. And then if you do supply a start date, you have the option to do an end date. If you don't supply an end date, it's just gonna return one day, which is the same date as your start date. And then you have interval. So this is the frequency of return data to use. And you have two options for this. Um, you can return daily data or weekly data if you're looking at historical data. And so you can either do daily or weekly in quotes or you can do one or seven in the function and it will work. So those are all of the different options that you have with this function. So again, it's a lot to go through. Now, just some notes before I actually show you how to use it. So every argument in the function should be put in quotation marks unless you're using a cell reference, except for this last one. If you do one or seven as your interval, it does not need to be in quotation marks. Um, not every symbol will return all attributes. Some symbols um, just don't have this data available, so it cannot be imported. The data used in this function are treated as noon UTC time. So if an exchange closes before that time, the results might be shifted a day. And if dates are used as an argument, the function will only return historical data. So that's kind of important to know. But that was a lot to get through. But let's actually look at some specific examples now that we have gotten through the syntax. So I'm gonna cover a few different ways of using the function. I'm going to show you how to get stock prices with the function. I'm gonna show you how to pull all of the attributes for a stock very quickly. I'm gonna show you how to use it for historical stock data, how to use it for mutual fund data, and then some options that you have when you're looking at currency and currency exchange rates with the function. So that'll be everything that I cover now that we have gotten through the syntax. So the first thing that we're looking at is stock prices. So using it to get stock prices is very simple. So equals, actually let me zoom in quickly. So first thing is equals, zoom in one more, okay. Sorry. Okay, equals Google Finance. And then I'm gonna press tab on my keyboard to enter the function. And then in quotation marks, we are going to put the symbol. So I'll just do Google, quotation mark, and then comma, and then the attribute that you want to import. So I'll just look at the price, and this is in quotations as well. And you can see this is the current price. And it will say on the bottom, quotes are not sourced from all markets and may be delayed up to 20 minutes. Information is provided as is and solely for informational purposes, not for trading purposes or advice. So I covered that earlier in a disclaimer in the video and it, whenever you use this function, you're also gonna see that message. So, that is one way to do it. Again, if you want spe a specific exchange, you would have to supply that before the ticker symbol. So this would be the syntax of a specific exchange. And you can see it pulls the same price. 
So that's one way is to type these into the function. You can also use cell references to get stock data. So like if you have a lot of things that you want to do, what you can do is Google Finance and I want to get the price of this and what I want is price. So since that is in this file, I'm just going to put the cell reference of that but I'm going to press F4 on my keyboard to lock this in place so that when I move the formula down, it still takes from this B1 cell reference. And then when I copy and paste this down, now it will pull the price for these different stocks because as the formula moves down, the cell reference moves down with it. So that is another way of using the function to get stock data. You can either put in the symbols and the attributes you want into the function manually by enclosing them in quotation marks, or you can put them into your spreadsheet and use a cell reference to reference them in the function. So now that we've gone over a example of using it, let's show you how to quickly pull all of the attributes for a stock. So what you want to do is write out all of the attributes that you want to return. Now you can either write them down a column or across a row depending on how you want this to look. So I have a list here of every single attribute that is possible for the current prices of a stock. And then what I'm going to do is use the function. So equals Google Finance and then I'm going to put the cell reference of the stock that I'm looking up and again I'm going to press F4 on my keyboard because I want that cell reference to stay on that B1 as I move down and then the next argument of the function is the attribute so I'm just going to select the cell reference that contains this first attribute close out the function press enter and it will calculate and now when you copy this and paste this down, paste, you can see it pulls all of the attributes. So if you quickly want to pull all of the attributes, I would recommend setting up your spreadsheet something like this because then you can do one formula and copy and paste it and it will pull all of the data. So this is current prices. Now, if you're looking up historical data, again, the options that you have available are different. So with historical data, you can only pull open, close, high, low, volume, and all. And so using historical data, you have to supply a start date. If you don't supply an end date, it's only going to take one day of data. So what I'll do here is I will look up some historical information for Google. And so in quotations, I'll put the ticker symbol. And then let's start with the open data. And we will do from December 2021 to December 31st, 2021. And you can see it supplied daily data from my start date to my end date. So this is the daily open for the month of December 2021. So by default, it's going to pull daily data. You can change this to weekly data is your only other option by either typing daily in quotation marks sorry weekly and so now instead of daily data it is pulling weekly opens or seven we'll also do the same thing so if you want to pull all of the data it would be all in the second argument of the function so you can see this now is pulling all of the options we have historical data 
open, high, low, close, and volume. And you can, again, pull daily or weekly. So that is importing historical data. Next, I'm gonna look at mutual fund data. So if the ticker symbol that you are using in the function is a mutual fund, there's going to be different attributes that are available. So I have this set up the same way as importing all attributes for a stock. So I'm just gonna pull all of the attributes for this mutual fund that are available. So it's gonna be the same exact way. Google Finance, and then my symbol F4 to lock that cell reference. And then the second argument is gonna be this first attribute. And then I'll just copy and paste this formula down. And these are all of the attributes that you have available for this mutual fund. And so one important thing to note is not all attributes are going to be available for every single ticker symbol. Some symbols just might not return any data because that data is not available to return. This one has everything but this capital gain one. So that is the attributes and how to import mutual fund data. Next, we're going to look at some options that you have with currency and currency exchange rates. So you also have the option to use Google Finance with currency. And so how you would do this, if I'm going to um, look at the exchange rates for USD and EUR, you would use the function like this. Google Finance, and then instead of the exchange, you're just gonna do currency, and then you will put your two currencies in here, the three letter abbreviation. So I'm gonna do USD and EUR, quotation, close in parentheses, enter. And so you can see it's 0.8871 with currency you can also look up historical information so if you want to look up historical information you would just change this to price and then you can do your dates here i'll do the same december 31st whoops 2021 to december 31st 2021 And so there was an error in here, so I forgot this quotation mark. Let's just get rid of that. And so these are the daily exchange rates from USD to EUR. And again, with historical data, you can either do daily or weekly. So that is currency. So just to kind of wrap up we have gone over several examples in this video we've gone over basic stock prices we've gone over pulling all attributes for a stock pulling historical data for stocks the different options you have with mutual funds and how to work with currency so that is pretty much it for this video lastly i We'll just cover some brief uh, troubleshooting tips if this function is not working for you. So most of the time when this function does not work, it'll be either because you had a typo, maybe you missed a quotation mark like I just did previously, or you mistyped something in the syntax or one of the symbols that you have used has been mistyped. Other times you may get these NA errors when this data is just not available for this specific symbol that you've chosen. Sometimes data just is not available. So if the function is not working for you, check the syntax, check to make sure you haven't mistyped anything, and then you can try a different symbol and see if it's just something where that specific one you are looking at does not have that attribute available. So that is what I would suggest if the function is not working for you. So I know this was kind of a lot to get through. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching the video. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or content suggestions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer everyone.